So uh, today we are going to be talking about breast health. And I don't know if you have noticed in my picture before, some of you know me and some of you don't, but uh, I am the founder of a business called Bras, and you can see that on my t-shirt there. And that stands for Breast Research Awareness and Support. And so um, today uh, I have too much to talk about. I had to cut it way back and maybe put it into two or three different segments for you because I have given uh, workshops that were 14 hours long before. <laughs> so just talking about breast health. So uh, we're going to start with just a few ideas and we may have already touched on a couple of them, but kind of go over them again just a little bit because obviously a lot of women have the Wave Watch, but this is really uh, great for the guys too. Lots of information in here that they can share. Uh, everybody's got, you know, a significant of some kind, uh, mothers, sisters, you know, the list is endless of all the relations and loved ones that we know that this might affect. So just to get a little bit of uh, information out of the way, um, basically uh, you can join on the uh, private Facebook group and uh, that would be Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics and you do have to join that group and then you can see these uh, anytime that you want at your own time. I am apologetic that I am not very good about editing these. So, you know, there may be uh, just a few extra rolling my eyes or something like that as I have fun and, and talk to everybody. But anyway, you can also check out wavewatch.com and see more information there. So uh, we are set to go and have uh, some information. Let me make sure everybody's in here, so. I think I've got everybody admitted. I have to do this now. Everything changes on these uh, websites all the time. I just wanted to remind you with a little piece of information each time we talk about the Wave Watch that there is getting to be more and more information about the future of sound and medicine. And I love this quote, and it's actually a quote of a quote, but basically it started with Dr. Bruce Lipton, who was very influential in these uh, sound uh, acoustical and frequency uh, category. And he says that information can be carried by chemistry and information can be carried by vibration. The question is whether one is better than the other. And I love this. I think I need to get it in mind. I'm not sure I have seen this exact quote, similar ideas, but this is a great way to say it. Chemical reaction tra reactions transfer about 2% of the information. 98% dissipates as heat loss. So that's when they're talking about actually uh, something that we've taken, like uh, a natural remedy even, you know, it's still it, kind of in that chemical area, but mostly uh, prescriptions. So 2% of their vibration or their uh, chemistry can be uh, received or transferred 98% of it dissipates. I had to repeat that for myself. Isn't that interesting? Information transmitted by frequency and vibration, which is what the Wave Watch is, passes nearly 100% of the information along. So I love that. Lipton added that chemical signals travel through fluids, that's our body, at about a foot per second. Vibration resonance and frequency, that's sound, that's the wave watch, travel at 186,000 miles per second. So that kind of beats it hand down, hands down, doesn't it? Love that quote. And then here's another one that I thought was very interesting. Uh, this one is from Rudolf Steiner. He was a visionary, and I've given you the information there. Healing with sound frequency and vibration is the source. And he's saying that pure tones will be used for healing before the end of the 20th century. So it's already happened, but now they're trying to figure out how to identify the specific sound and the energy frequencies that affect your body. And it shouldn't be long before uh, sound therapy is embraced by mainstream mate medicine as a complementary therapy. 
So hopefully we're right in the, the cusp of that, but it actually started sadly to say, a hundred years ago. And we've talked about that with white rife frequencies and they've been measuring frequencies for those hundred years. And another thing about the wave watch, you may have seen a version of this before, but this is how the wave watch is so um, in tune. That's a good way to say it. I hadn't thought about that. It's in tune with today because there are hundreds of sound frequencies there's no cords, there's no messy wires or patches. It doesn't have to be connected to the, EM, uh, the internet. There's no EMFs from it. There's no monthly fee. Anybody can use it, even our animals. <laughs> and we're getting testimonies on that. And it's very cost-effective and it is considered self-care. So these are why this is kind of cutting edge. Uh, I look at some other uh, technology that's out there. And um, I, you know, I'm very pleased to say that we're not hooked up to the internet. You don't have to have something on, you know, you don't have to be having two or three different cords attached to you. Uh, I saw something the other day where you put a cuff on both hands and then you have something in your ears and then you're running a little monitor, you know, on a desk or something. So um, I think the Wave Watch is very um, versatile in those ways and has those advantages. And the last thing, and then I'll get to uh, some great information about breast health. Uh, I cannot call this a, a, a medical tool, a diagnosis. It does not make any kinds of that uh, diagnosis. It's not a, a medical device. It doesn't, uh, it has not been uh, looked at by the FDA or certified by the FDA or anything like that because it is only a, it's a music player basically. So I can't say it any more simple than that. So how many times do you have to have your music, um, you know, licensed? Uh, by the FDA. So this is a musical type product with acoust acoustical frequencies. So it's promoting self-care and it helps to maintain or encourage good health, reduce the impact of some chronic diseases where self-care has been shown to play an important role. It's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease or medical condition. So um, the Wave Watch is not FDA approved or considered a medical device. Any testimonies or volunteer, no one's been reimbursed. <laughs> and of course, we do have some names that sound like a medical diagnosis, but that's not our di diagnosis. That was the diagnosis that was from the medical community or just in general, how our language verifies or specifies or identifies a problem. So again, it's not a medical diagnosis. It's only using that name so that you will know which frequency set to use. Couldn't be any easier than that. Now, I just had fun like three minutes ago, I decided to put this picture on. I just found it on my wall in the room where I'm talking. So these are the two reasons why I developed the Wave Watch basically. My mother, you'll rec you know, you can't miss that. And my sister and both of them diagnosed, were diagnosed with breast cancer about six months apart. And at that time, my medical doctors insisted that I come in every three months so that they could do an exam. And all they would do was uh, actually gasp half of the time and say, oh, we found another lump, you know, we'll, we'll mark it, come back in three months. And so I did this for several times. And then they decided that I should have a prophylactic mastectomy because both my mother and my sister had breast cancer and it probably was a gene in my family. Now, I didn't do any genetic testing. That was about 16 years ago. Uh, I still don't know that I uh, would love genetic testing by any means because I learned from Dr. Bruce Lipton, who I already quoted, that you can control your genetics. And I realized that um, my mom was right, was worked, had worked on a farm. Uh, there was lots of toxic chemicals there, lots of other things going on. And so that, uh, that would be really hard for me to necessarily say that whatever happened to my mom was going to cause me breast cancer. So here's what I did instead. 
I developed a business called Bras Thermography. And some of you have been there, don't know who, who's on yet, you know, but some of you have been to my office in Kansas City or Springfield where I have an office. And I also have uh, different, you might say franchises or business uh, owners who have purchased my uh, concept. And there's about 10 of those around the US that do have a bras thermography office. And um, I research breast health techniques and prevention techniques. And that's why I was saying when I got started on this program today, some of you might not have been on quite yet, but I have given workshops that were 14 hours long about breast health. So it's really hard for me to cut down and talk, it, talk about it for just an hour or less than an hour. But the basic idea of bras, breast research, awareness, and support. And I really love my logo and I have uh, fun with it. And, you know, sometimes guys come into my pinkish office and they are as proud as can be to add and contribute to the philosophy of empowering women to take care of their own preventive breast health. And sometimes we have men come in. We actually have men come in who are having trouble with that. So let me pause just a minute, make sure everybody's here. I've got everybody clicked. I think we're doing okay. So the next idea is, again, uh, education about how I combine the Wave Watch with Bras Thermography. So when women came to see me, and I probably screened about 6,000 women now with a uh, tool called Thermography, and then something else that's called an MSA, a uh, Biomeridian Stress System. And... Um, what I was finding out is that they were having all kinds of problems. Now, these are the ones I was specifically able to put into the Wave Watch under a category labeled breast frequencies. So we know that women have these exact problems. So that if you know somebody that's having any kind of soreness or you know, fullness or itchiness or problems, it's a good idea to just start with the breast cal the top one, the breast calcifications, and put it on the double arrows at the lower left-hand corner. And I hope everybody knows what I'm talking about. The lower left-hand corner here, you'll set double arrows and it will run through all of those particular ideas for breast health. But wait, it can go way beyond this because I hate to, I hate to sh share bad news, it really is bad. They have found out that there are 85 kinds of breast cancer. So I need to find my quote on that uh, and where that is from, but I tell women that all the time, just because a, a soreness or a fullness or a problem has gone away, doesn't mean that the problem's gone completely. You know, So we need to be aware of that and aware that a mammogram a thermogram, you know, all the kinds of things that we could do. We need to, to keep doing a lot of things. We shouldn't just depend on one thing, not even the Wave Watch. We shouldn't depend on one thing because there are 85 kinds of breast cancer. Isn't that a hard one to kind of say? Who would have known? I mean, when I started into working with breast health and named my business Bras, I was ready for sharing uh, information with women about breast health except for that one little figure, 85 different kinds of breast cancer. So let's keep kicking it off and say, I've had about nine testimonies from women with breast improvements using the Wave Watch. And that usually, I think about eight of them have been in my office or when I was around the person. So um, they didn't take very long. They were about 30 minutes. Some of them might've been an hour. Um, some of them might not, I think there was one, the last one that I was given that testimony, uh, the lady went and had some testing done and found out that, um, you know, a mask that she'd had there for years was gone. So she don't know, she didn't know when it went away and she had ran the Wave Watch several times. But, um, you know, here's a couple of testimonies, but I was unbelievably thrilled when I started getting women with results with the Wave Watch. So, that's why I started it to start with was the whole business which to protect my mom and my sister and myself. So these are a couple of testimonies and I think you can kind of read them. 
uh, I really like, um, you know, just the fact that women were uh, anxious to share and were um, excited about using the Wave Watch also. So if we were to start with some of the information that I showed you here, I went back two screens. You could also open up your little booklet. I think you can see on uh, my imaging. If you would open it to women's and of course breast, this is the screen that we're talking about. And I'm gonna be kind of jumping around a little bit, trying to go step by step, but it's kind of hard. Uh, some of the information that I wanna share with you. So as we looked up breast calcifications, that's the first one. Now I've had problems with the breast calcification. In fact, I've had um, a surgery for breast calcification before, and it took me years to find some information about it. So I'm kind of jumping off from breast calcifications for just a second because I had to go backwards in my own life when I discovered Louise Hay. She is a pretty well-known uh, metaphysical lecturer is what they call her with 50 million books. And if you haven't seen her or heard about her, she's worth looking up. She has passed away now, but she has uh, really helped teach people creative powers and self-healing. So according to her, I probably had something going on from an emotion. So she's a, a cancer survivor. And she says that she did probably developed her cancer from being raped in early childhood. Very, very sad. But when we look around and share our life histories with everybody or not share them or keep them in our hearts, or whatever has gone on in our life, we may not have had the problem she had, but there may be something else that was just as emotional to us. So she leads the world in telling us emotional stress can lead to illness. So out of the book, I hope that you're learning by now with some of the workshops that you uh, come to already, that we have to almost start every problem that we're really concerned about, maybe that we've been diagnosed with, with emotions. So play the wave watch emotions and emotional ties to disease is a great one. And she says that women are just really prone to that because our breasts represent mothering, nourishment, nurturing, and if we're having problems with those, then we're probably not nourishing ourselves. We're not put, we're putting everyone else first. Possibly we're over mothering, over protecting, overbearing, but not necessarily. It can go the other way. Every time we have an emotion, in my opinion, it's like, here's the middle of the motion, but you can be overbearing on this side, or you could be the one that's suffering, that's being put upon, that's being bullied couple of different ways to think about it. So anytime we're working with emotions, we want to bring that emotion into balance. So um, she also says that cancer, and I'm not saying that we're talking about cancer the whole time, we're talking about breast lumps and health, but of course uh, in our society, we have a fear factor today and everything has to be uh, leading up to cancer. And of course, I did start talking to start with, with my mom uh, and sister having cancer. And that's what I was trying to protect myself from. So we don't want to hold in anger, resentment. So emotions. So play all emotions that you can get in. And then especially emotional ties to diseases. If you were worried about a particular breast problem or you have even a diagnosis of any kind. Now, here's another connection with our um, a little bit differently, but uh, Caroline Miss, if I'm Carolyn Miss, if I'm saying her last name correctly, uh, just really makes note. We've talked about chakras just a little bit, but uh, the fourth chakra, the heart chakra, is the one that can be so connected for our breast health. So that could be also one to play. You can play through all the chakras because they're part of the emotions, but you could key in on the fourth chakra. And usually I say, if you're balancing, you want to use all of them and get them all balanced, but then you could also play the fourth chakra a little bit longer. 
So she is saying that breast cancer is caused by a disturbance in the energy flow of the heart chakra. And of course, that chakra is connected with love, forgiveness, and compassion. We just think about the heart, you know. Now, I also tell women when they're in my office that we carry our stress in our shoulders and then it works down into our breasts. And so that is uh, supremely important to realize that that energy can go through that. And I just now realized I have a thermogram to show that and I forgot about it. So maybe I'll see if I can find that one for another time, but we can definitely see stress goes down to our breasts. So we wanna let go as much stress as we can. So these are some ideas. Are we nurturing? Are we over caring? Do you put your needs last? These are some questions that you could ask yourself. Do you still have emotional me memories that you need to heal? Uh, are there people th that, need, that you need to forgive? And what prevents you from letting go of pain? Do you ever use emo emotional wounds? What have you done that needs forgiving? Which people are working to forgive you? Just a few questions. And I think all of us can, I'm not trying to say anybody has cancer because they haven't worked through any of these ideas. I'm not saying that you will develop it because you haven't worked through any of these ideas. I'm just saying that this is an idea that we could be using. So we don't wanna point the finger at, at anybody's emotions, but we wanna say we all want to have as uh, healthy emotions as we can. And in this day and age, we all know what we're talking about. So you're protecting yourself by protecting your emotions and making sure that they're balanced. Remember, they don't wanna be on one side or the other. We want our emotions to be straight up where they're supposed to be, very balanced. I did find this chart that I thought was easy for us to use because when we get a lump, women just, uh, we all do, we go crazy. You know, um, I was very uh, worried when my mom and sister were diagnosed and my doctor's answer was to get checked every three months and then to tell me to have a uh, double mastectomy, a prophylactic mastectomy, even though I had no signs of cancer. Now that was 15, 16 years ago, but that was my shock and it still stays with me. So, you know, if you can imagine uh, shocks that other women have. So we all have something that may be bothering us and maybe I need to keep working on that one just a little bit. I don't know if that's called being mad at the medical community or me saying, hey, I can figure out a better way to do something. I don't have to, to listen to just one idea. I can reach out. I can talk to many people before I make my decision. And that's what everybody needs to do about anything in their self-care is look at many different ideas. So if you actually had a lump, uh, these would be some differences in that. And I know I've told, I've had a couple people say they take a picture, you know, of some of my um, screens. And so this one might be a picture to take. I'm not for sure if anybody needs this or not. You could also look it up. And I see, I forgot to give the um, uh, place where I got that particular picture from. I'll have to add that. But basically you're going to have a benign lump that's pretty smooth. It's, it can be painful. So a lot of times a cancerous lump is not painful most of the time. Uh, it's well-defined. It moves. It'll change. You know, it'll move under the skin. Your skin isn't dimpled. You may have some discharge, but the nipple isn't retracted. And it's just the opposite on a malignancy. It's very hard. It's painless. It's very irregular. You can kind of feel it. Um, there's a fixation. It's fixed. You can't really move it around, you know. Uh, there can be some dimpling. The skin will kind of sink in might have a bloody discharge and you can have nipple retraction. So just an idea that I thought it was worth sharing because you've got to know some, you know, look at those ideas. Um, and I think it's better to be educated before you're frantically looking. So I just want to show those to you. So, you know, when people um, have been diagnosed with something or think they might have a diagnosis and they start to look up ideas, um, we can really scare ourselves. So sometimes just being educated now and keeping in the back of your mind, oh, 
you know, if it's painful, oh, that's probably not a problem, but I'm going to go ahead and get that checked out in several different ways. So uh, you, you know a tip or two, but you should uh, keep looking. So if I pause for just a second to let me catch up here with a drink, um, I think I have showed this one before, but cancer cells can explode with acoustical sounds. Now, I thought that this was very unusual because this uh, man who was a bioenergetic healer, Fabian Maman, uh, found that through acoustic sounds that he could empower healthy ones and energize them, but explode, was his word, explode cancer cells. And I use the word self vibrate, you know, self, uh, they'll uh, over vibrate, but his word was explode. And he taught women with breast cancer to use their voices to tone the same frequency for three and a half hours every day for a month. So that meant they were, mm, they were basically humming or singing, however he taught them to do that. So great reduction in size, and they had literally shriveled up. So we do know that the voice is huge but the same way with the wave watch. I can't imagine spending three and a half hours of my day toning. I might if I had been diagnosed with cancer and there was nothing else that I chose to do except that. But the wave watch can do that for you in many different ways and many different tones. Because at this point, after 100 years, they know that there's several frequencies that are really, really good for breast problems. So we're moving ahead. And I know I'm trying not to jump, but it's a little hard here. So I hope I don't lose you. But I wanted to share with you the pathogen folder that we've already talked about. I have a whole workshop on pathogens, but I wanted to kind of relate it back to breast health. So we have coding for specific uh, toxins in a folder that's labeled pathogens. And then I wanted to show you how it connects with these. So calcifications are fairly common in women. And sometimes I've had a doctor say, oh, you just needed to drink more water. You're, that's kind of like a kidney stone, but you have that calcification in your breast. But then when you work and look just a little bit deeper, I did possibly confuse myself <laughs> because they're saying, let me see if I can find it here, uh, candida uh, and fungus are connected with calcifications. So the very first one, breast calcifications on our little booklet is connected with breast problems, but the calcifications are connected with fungal, candida, molds, that kind of thing. Also, I'm suggesting that you play kidney stone as what are, what are kidney stone? They're calcifications. So those are possibly some different frequencies that could still be helpful for your breast. Don't forget that every um, frequency set may not work the same on people. So we wanna look outside the box. And I think it's good quality thinking to think, oh, kidney stones have calcifications, our breasts have calcifications. So I'm gonna make sure I run through both of those because there is a connection. So let me show you if I can, how those are connected. Um, Cyclosporin is a fungal derived drug. Now this was pretty shocking to me. 87 organ transplants uh, reported tumors after they were given cyclosporin. Malignancies appeared 14 months after the treatment and there was a surprising number of ovarian, testicular and breast uh, malignancies. So this was a fungal product <laughs> that possibly caused the problem. And then on the other side, you'll see the other quote reported the um, uh, Patino uh, in 1995 
reported the occurrence of breast cancer as a complication of the cyclosporin in their kidney transplants. So here they are uh, working with mold or messing up and it it's, has really caused a problem. It didn't help it, it caused a problem. So here's another idea of how that is related. We're still talking about calcifications, the very first idea in our breast idea. So um, in 1990, they found that uh, calcium oxalate crystals are present in calcifications found in the breast tissue of patients with breast cancer. So this oxalic acid is a mycotoxin, it's a mold, and it's produced by a number of different funguses. So here we have lots of women with breast calcifications, and I think sometimes I see on the internet that calcifications are anything to worry about. And then the next time I see that it's a problem and then, you know, you find this information that it's related to calcifications and fungal problems. So of course we have funguses. So the oxalates in the breast, and again, we have oxalates in our kidney stones, but I never saw anywhere that kidney cancer was connected with kidney stones, which are oxalates. So I'm still kind of working on that one. You know, don't didn't that one didn't quite make sense to me. I didn't draw a connection between that. But they definitely know that kidney stones can be oxalates, not all of them. But they're not saying that you can develop kidney cancer if you have kidney stones whatsoever. But as women, if we have calcifications, which are oxalic acid in our breast, they are connected with breast cancer. So if anybody knows the answer to that, let me know on that one. So we don't make this oxalic acid. So it is a, a, you know, an appropriate conclusion is what this study cited to say that these are connected with cancer problem or calcifications. So fungal is a connection with cancer problems in our breast and calcifications. I'm gonna go backwards because I skipped one. Now, this is another uh, aflatoxin, another fungus, and it is um, connected with uh, cancer, uh, breast cancer. They are not saying it is an, uh, an uh, oxalate, but they are saying that this does cause uh, problems with breast cancer. And so that is the very first frequency set alphabetically that is in our pathogens folder. So again, I tried to cover all of those. Uh, you can either play the candida and fungal folder or also the pathogen folder and get rid of some fungal products if you're having any kind of trouble with your breast. That's a huge one. So I'm kind of going through these again. Okay, now we're switching gears because I'm trying to go in alphabetical order again, but we're talking about viruses a little bit. So uh, uh, Luc Montanet, uh, he did uh, die, but he was a Nobel Prize winner. And he is one of the great, uh, to me, researchers and uh, uh, doctors who are saying that frequencies may be very useful for viruses. So use the wave watch because the next frequencies that we have on the pathogen folder are viral frequencies, the Epstein-Barr frequencies. So those are definitely connected to breast cancer. And here's a testimony. And this isn't even one of the testimonies that I talked about breast lumps decreasing drastically on nine different women or them experiencing improvements in their breast. This is just one that um, I do have a video on this on the website. And um, when a, a lady was playing the Epstein bar frequency on the wave watch, she knows a tingling and she, you know, she would just be kind of jumpy and she'd say, oh, I feel it here. Oh, I feel it here. It's on this side. It's on my back. And then she felt it in one breast and then it jumped to the other breast. And she is one of, she is the only lady I have ever met personally who has had breast cancer in both breasts. And that is very rare, but it does happen. And so Epstein-Barr, a virus, is connected with 
that particular one. So obviously there are more things here. So they haven't said yet whether a breast cyst could be connected with Epstein-Barr, whether a breast disease, fibrocystic, they haven't really connected all of these things. My, my best connection was that the calcifications can be from mold. So that's why I'm saying play through all of these with specific frequencies for the breast, plus play the pathogens folder, and then may even go backwards, maybe I shouldn't say backwards, but go to the area where viruses are and play through all the viruses. So you have three different ideas to protect you, the breast folder, the pathogen folder, and then specific pathogens themselves in the germ folder. So that one was talking about Epstein-Barr. The next one is talking about the cytomegalovirus. And so they have a link between breast cancer and this particular virus. So this is in the pathogen folder. If you've ever been told in the past that you have the cytomegalovirus, uh, I would isolate that one and play that one a lot. I would go through all of the breast frequencies. And again, I would go to all of the germs and make sure that I played through all of the virus ideas in that particular section. So um, there's a lot of con connectivity with this particular cancer and, uh, excuse me, with this particular virus and problems with our breast health. Now, we're skipping one more time to another uh, problem and that's parasites. So again, that's what the pathogen folder is, is specific pathogens, but that's what we're covering in the breast in this particular one here in different ways. So we're getting layers of frequencies that can be very helpful. Now, some of you have been to my office and you may have heard this story, you may have seen my video, but just a real short synopsis. When I was creating the Wave Watch, developing it, I used a tool called the Biomeridian or the MSAS. And uh, I worked with a hundred clients and 42 people out of the 100 seem to be having trouble with parasites. Now, this is an amazing tool. I could talk all day long about it. I've used it for almost 16 years now, and uh, it still, it doesn't cease to amaze me. It's just totally amazing. So what we did was the prototype of the Wave Watch. Uh, I set it for parasites, and 42 people uh, used it in my office for about 30, 35 minutes. I also taught them muscle testing or kinesiology, and they picked out a remedy for, a parasi for parasites, and then we set that aside. Then they, they wore the Wave Watch, and then once we got done with that time, which was just, again, 30, 30, 34, 40 minutes, um, we retested two different ways. Their bodies, by kinesiology, did not want the parasite remedy, and their bodies also did not tell me anything about parasites when I retested them on the uh, MSAS um, system. Now, I have done that system, like I mentioned, for almost 16 years, so at that time it would have been 14 years, and that was impossible. And so when I first started in the first two people, I'm going, oh, this is really interesting, you know. But by the time I tested 100, I thought that was a good cutoff point, 42 out of 42 times, you know. So I guess I could be saying the word 100%, but, you know, you, you, get, you do something like that, you might get yourself in trouble. So it seemed to be very, very effective. And everybody was so good in my office. They, some people volunteered to, came, uh, to come back and get retested in a month. Um, two months, three months, even a week, two weeks, and three weeks. And no one was seemed to be carrying parasites in any of those time frames. And that's literally impossible because for those 14 years previous, I would have given many supplements. I would have given, you know, parasite detoxes and cleanses. And it would have been a six to eight month uh, procedure and cost hundreds of dollars. I'm still getting that it was very effective. And I, of course, I can't put everything in, and I know some of you have seen this before, but I do have a picture of someone who sent me 
six hours after she was in this group of 42 people, six hours after she, you know, after she got home and wore the way and wore the way watch in my office, um, she uh, sent me a picture of what looked like a foot long parasite that she had eliminated. So uh, that was my best uh, physical, uh, you know, spatial look at thinking that it had been very effective because those foot long parasites are kind of hard to get out. So anyway, she was one that I retested again, I believe, and we still didn't pick up those parasitic problems later. So huge, huge, huge for us to be thinking about. Now, I just found this one when I was putting this together, and I think this is really exciting. So I think uh, I know the group that I'm talking to, and so many uh, of you are uh, aware of ivermectin. So uh, a group in uh, 2020, and this is when uh, written up in the Oncology Times. How about that? Oncology Times. Uh, seeking an agent among FDA approved drugs, our group found that ivermectin, an antiparasitic drug used worldwide since 1975 to treat close to 1 billion people. Do I need to keep on reading? Primarily for river blindness and other parasitic parasitic infections promotes ICD in breast cancer cells. So ICD is immunogenic cell death. And it's a cell death that stimulates or simulates, stimulates, excuse me, stimulates the immune system of the host to kill those parasites. Now, the parasites may not be causing all the cancer. There are some other uh, uh, parasitic drugs that have been used. Uh, there's one called fembendazole, and basically it is a parasitic drug, and they are saying that it does work for many kinds of cancers, but they have three different reasons on why that works. Not necessarily that it kills the parasites, that it also disrupts the host system, the cells, excuse me, the parasites cell system to deliver uh, sugar to the cell, uh, to the par you know, to the cancer cells and a couple of other different ways that it was working. So huge uh, for that particular idea also. So another idea that we wanted to talk about is E. coli. So now we're to bacteria. So I know I'm kind of jumping all over. I was trying to go in alphabetical order and it was jumping us back and forth. Uh, but uh, we do have uh, great information on E. coli. Again, it's breast cancer connections. Uh, it is very connected. So if you've been told anything about E. coli or if you think you might have it, then you want to be playing the E. coli frequency set. And we have you covered, again, three different ways. You're covered in the breast calcifications area, you're covered in the pathogens folder, and then you're covered in the germs folder. So hugely important to be playing through all of those. And I thought I had a wonderful testimony. Uh, I did test someone with my uh, MSA, MSAS system. And it suggested that she might have E. coli. Again, this isn't a medical diagnosis, just looking for frequencies. The machine that I use has about 50,000 frequencies. So anyway, it pointed out she might have uh, E. coli. And then when we used the Wave Watch prototype, she felt this electrical swoop, you know, from her stomach to her breast. And then it squiggled through her breast is what she said, just really slowly. She could feel it just going through her whole breast and then zipping out her shoulder. So she was really thankful to have tried the watch prototype, kind of like what happened with, uh, you know, the other lady and E. coli that was reacting in her system. She knew she had it and she reacted to it when she played it. So anytime you react to something like Heidi reacted to the E. coli, uh, in her breast, um, you know, you should isolate that particular idea and play it for a longer period of time. Now, how long a period? There isn't a sharp answer for that, but I tend to protect myself and maybe play it overnight a couple of times. And then maybe a month later, I might play it, you know, rotate it through. 
Now I'm kind of winding down just a little bit because we want some time for us. Uh, there's a fewer number of us here today, so we can have a little bit more of a, an exchange of ideas as, as necessary. Uh, we'll be talking about these more in depth later, but don't forget you would want to add the liver and detox frequencies to this. It's very huge to be able to do this. Now, sometimes women may not have seen this particular workshop. They may not have talked to me in person. They might not have looked at any videos or anything. So they're just playing the ideas in the breast calcification, or excuse me, the ideas in the breast folder. And that's, that's great because I did put in liver and kidney detox and lymph detox so that, you know, if you miss that, it's still in there. So we've got that covered. And I knew that I had uh, to, to put that in as I worked with women in my office. So we have you covered. So even if you just used the breast frequencies, you are covered in a very good way, because this is what women were doing when about nine of them have had uh, breast lumps change, and a couple of them had them go away completely in 30 minutes. Uh, one, again, went from an almond size to a tapioca size, lots of different ideas, but that was a 30-minute segment playing these ideas under breast. Now, if you add the all of the germ folder, especially the candida, the germs, the molds, you add the pathogen folder, you've gotten um, extra protection. So that's the whole idea of the way watch is extra protection. So here's another one for the lymph just to kind of show you. But those are some ideas that would be really good for you to do. So I think I have, have finished what I wanted to share today. And so I kind of want to open this up. We'll see where we're at here. And if anybody has any comments or any, any ideas, uh, now's the time to go ahead and share that. So Appreciate you listening to me today. Hope I'm not uh, uh, too uh, over the top because uh, I guess you'd say breasts are my favorite subject. <laughs> so considering the name of my business is bras and I've been doing that for 15 years, I think that's uh, uh, understandable. But any, any uh, suggestions, ideas, questions, go ahead. You can uh, unmute yourself. There's only a few of us today, so. Hi, um, I was wondering, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I was wondering, uh, my husband uh, has been diagnosed with hyperparathyroidism. And, and, and that's a, that's a, there's too much calcium. Okay. Yes. And I was wondering, uh, relating to everything you said before, as far as uh, how they correlate to each other, how uh, would there be, because I didn't see any hyperparathyroidism in your listings. 850 but you know but I yeah and I didn't I don't have that one I'm not sure that there is one for that you know sometimes I you know find some new sources and possibly I could find that but I do not have that exact one but you know you got a good start on just what we talked about today you know we're, we are talking about some calcifications and sometimes uh, you know the kidney stone calcifications are more um, for from calcium there's four different kinds of kidney stones and one is an oxalate and the other three are calcium based. So that might be a possibility of going outside the box. It's not going to hurt him. Uh, there's a possibility that playing the kidney stone frequencies just or the kidney stone um, set might be helpful with calcifications that are related to calcium overload. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? I mean, like I, I know that you said for the breast, it was, uh, let's see, it was a Kidney and, and what else? I came in late. Uh, oh, um, all of the uh, fungal and mold would be uh, related to, more to um, uh, oxalate overload. Uh, but the hyperparathyroidism is just a little bit different with uh, not balancing the calcium correctly. Okay. Now, one more question, and we uh, have talked about this a lot, but does he use any salt of any kind? Uh, yeah, he uses, uh, I, I give him uh, low sodium salt, Morton. Okay, so I would suggest that you study that. We've talked about that, but that is possibly a reason right there because I suggest to people that they um, use a Himalayan salt, a Celtic salt, or Redmond sea salt. And all of those have about 80 minerals in them. 
So when you are giving him a Morton salt, you are giving him one salt that, or excuse me, a salt that has no minerals in it. They have added aluminum to it. And then they have also added iodine, but it is a synthetic iodine. So sometimes just changing the mineral concept in his body can change that. So the something is out of balance. Obviously he's, you know, he's storing calcium, but why? It's out of balance. So usually, just like I say, the start of women's breast health is, is the breast folder, but the start of all health is the correct amount of minerals. Because if you have one of those particular minerals, um, one of those particular salts, they're all gonna have about 80 different minerals in them. Then your body is flooded with minerals and your enzymes don't work, your vitamins don't work, <laughs> your, you know, your thyroid doesn't work, so your parathyroid doesn't work either, and the minerals are incorrect. So that's a starting point right there is learning about salt and okay. changing that, dropping that white salt immediately. That's what the doctors tell you, but that is shorting you 80 minerals that your body needs to function correctly, and then, some other minerals get out of balance. Okay, and also I wanted to give kind of a testimonial. Um, the um, my husband has migraines and he has vertigo, and he, he got a headache. And it, they, the doctor said it was from chocolate, the migraines, and um, he got a headache and we couldn't cure it. I tried all my curatives and nothing would work, and we put. I just suddenly thought. Let's put him on vertigo because we tried headache, we tried migraines, we tried nothing worked. We put him on vertigo and I got rid of the headache. Oh, wow. Is that interesting? And see, I just keep saying, think outside the box and you did perfect. That was great. That was really great that you did it that way. So mm -hmm. you just do not know. Mm -hmm. And so since you don't have that many people, I don't see, oh, here's one, but I'll just ask one more question if I may. Um, I have uh, I cut uh, my fingernail broke off, tore off. And so I cut it to even it up and it really hurts. And so I had it on bacteria. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I figured that was the best thing for it. But then what I did was uh, when it's to make it, I couldn't sleep. Uh, and it's not red, so I know it's not infected. Um, but I still put bacterial infection just in case. I took the watch and uh, the two, um, as you turn it over, and the two places where the, the little silvers stick out, and I stuck that underneath where the pain was, underneath the beginning, you know, the, uh -huh. the and it just stopped the pain. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's neat. Is that, are those two things, the ones that are supposed to be touching your body? and cause the uh, uh, watch to work? Is that why that worked? Or? No, it's actually the speaker on the back of it that uh, puts the frequencies, you know, starts your cells to vibrate, uh, you know, but that, that maybe they are, maybe I didn't realize that. Maybe they are uh, conducting some uh, frequencies through that way. Oh. Yeah, I'll check that out. Okay. All right, thanks. And what was your first name again? Brenda. I've been here once before. I'm sorry, Mary Beth? Roberta. Oh, Roberta. Okay, I'm sorry. Just didn't hear. And I think you're, you come up under Gol, Golo. Golo? Nope. Yeah. Yes, yeah. okay. All right, anybody else have a question or a comment or even a testimony? Hey, I love those. Oh, I have another testimony if no one's speaking. Um, I. I might have told you this, I'm not sure, um, but I, it might be, not be a repeat for these people. Um, I had um, a flu for two weeks. Did I tell you this? I don't know. And like you say, it, we love re testimonies of any kind. We don't even know if they're repeats. <laughs> so that's perfect. Um, I had uh, some sort of a, a, a fever, a exhaustion, uh, sore throat, blowing the nose for about a week. And I couldn't get rid of it. I tried all my curatives. And uh, I put on um, the combo for 
Darn it. Now I've forgotten what it is. Was it the viral combo? I think so. I think it was the viral combo. Coronavirus combo? It's that one. I put on that one and it got rid of it overnight. Wow. Perfect. And anytime you see the word combo, it means I've added several different frequency sets together so that you don't have to worry about that. And that way you can just, uh, you know, tap if you're interested and put that combo uh, right into um, a, a, a favorites list if you want, or you can just touch the combo and make it keep repeating all night long and it will cover many ideas. And that's why those uh, combo frequency sets are longer than some of the other ones. Um, nobody's speaking, okay. I know, anybody else? If not, I'll go ahead, I'll wait. Yeah, yeah, anybody else? But we, you know, she's she has another comment. That's perfect, Roberta. Okay, um, I, I, uh, prior to this, when I had a hip problem on my left hip, I put on the inflammation and it got rid of the hip problem, okay? <laughs> okay. Now I put on the inflammation when I wake up, I have like uh, my legs feel really strained. Could there be reason? Could, could I put it somewhere else or is it bringing up something that has to be noticed and I should go somewhere else? Can you think of what to do? You're thinking. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understood your question. Are you thinking that I put on the inflammation overnight? Now I put it on and now my legs feel really strained and tight and hurt my thighs when I get up in the morning. Well, I'm not sure about that. You might lay off of that a little bit. You know, you might change it up, that kind of thing, or stop, not play it all night long, maybe for a shorter period of time. Play for a shorter period? Yep. What, would, what else could I use on my thighs? Uh, there's something for hip pain, under pain go to joint area and there's one for hip pain specifically and all the area, uh, there's quite a few things under uh, joints. So there's like, you know, joint support, aeropathy, uh, several ideas there that you could probably pick out and play. Janie, were you gonna give a testimony about your dog? Well, I can, I guess. <laughs> I really don't know <laughs> what to say in specific, but <clears throat> This poor dog, he's like 13 or something. He's a little rat terrier. And he's been coughing so bad for about a year or so. And someone told me he had a heart murmur. Well, I finally took him to the vet and, you know, he had a really bad one, I guess. So they gave him some medicine, of course. And they said his heart sounded real slushy when it beat, you know, it was really, it was like a number six on a scale of one to six. And so I've been treating him with this watch all the time. And I mean, it calms him right down. That, that heart just looks like it's just doing a really good job. Now, whether it's totally solving it, I don't know, but he's in such less pain and, than he was. And it seems like he just loves this watch. Every time I turn it on, he comes from someplace and listens to it. And if he doesn't like that particular thing, he walks off. He'll go further away. I know he still hears it, but it doesn't bother him as much. And it just seems in general, he's in much better shape than he was a year ago when all <laughs> this was going on. And he certainly doesn't cough as much. Of course, the medicines could have helped that a little bit, but I keep working and working on it. And it seems like he, I don't know if he has a bowel obstruction or something, but he wants to cough from way, way deep, it seems to me. I've told the vets and they say it's all heart. Well, I don't blame them totally. And I keep working on that. So the other day, he just looked like he was miserable. <clears throat> I've got a bad bug too, you can tell by my voice. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> I put on uh, foot poisoning because his tummy looked like it was really swollen up and he looked just, he didn't feel well. And I was watching him, his tummy in about five minutes started moving around down there. And then he uh, got up, turned over on the other side and he laid there for a while. 
the food poisoning thing went away. Well, then I uh, turned on the obstruction, intestinal obstruction. And heck, probably in 10 or 15 minutes, that dog was up walking around and he acted like he felt pretty good. So <laughs> I really think that he has a problem down there in his intestinal tract and maybe food poisoning could definitely be a factor, especially with dog foods, you know, and all that stuff. So wow. that might be something you should try on dogs and people too, probably if you just don't feel good. All right. Like food poisoning, period. And if anybody else has any testimonies on, on animals, I'd love to have them. I'm probably going to put together, you know, a, an hour long, you know, segment sometime on, on animals. Cause I've gotten several testimonies and uh, Jane uh, sent me a picture of her dog, you know, where she put her, you know, the uh, wave watch so that he could listen to it, you know? So, okay. I think Anne has a question. Go ahead. Anne. Oh, at one time you had mentioned about safe dentists to get, you know, fillings removed or things done and how do, and I can talk to you later about that, but if anybody has a safe, how do I know if a dentist is safe or does anybody have a dentist, a safe dentist they would refer me to? Boy, that is a big one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that is a big one. I have several people that go to different dentists here in the Kansas City area. And I know you've moved back and then, you know, I think, oh, that's a good one. I'll recommend it. And then the next time I hear something negative. So I'm not sure what to tell people on the dentist. You know, okay. if you're a little bit of a muscle tester or somebody that does some dowsing and can get a yes or a no, I know that sounds a little different, but uh, very good energies come from some uh, dentists and, and some do not, you know, so maybe if you're able to harness that. Uh, other than that, I only know word of mouth and of course, uh, maybe any testimonies they have on the internet. But okay, yeah, thanks. If anybody, uh -huh. anybody else who's watching has a dentist they know of that's safe, please let me know or let Linda know. Yep, thanks. In the Kansas okay. City area, yep, yes, so. yeah, thank you. Well, ladies, I hope I wasn't too boring. I know we've covered some of that before. I still have a whole laundry list of things to talk to you about for breast health. If you think that's an okay subject, um, there are, again, like I mentioned, 85 different uh, types of breast cancer. So we very barely touched the, sub, the, the subject about different things that can cause our breast cancer. So on another segment, I would be able to cover chemicals and, uh, you know, of course, uh, different pesticides and, and things like that. So uh, just kind of in closing, just a, a little tidbit of, of what's to come. Uh, my mother was on a farm, like I mentioned before, and when she was first tested on the MSAS or the Biomeridian system, which I showed you, the first thing it told us out of 50,000 ideas was atrazine. And atrazine is, you know, thanks to Monsanto or at some point in time, they owned it. Uh, it is a, uh, herb, a pesticide sprayed on all the corn. Uh, my dad had sprayed it for 12 years and it's known to actually cause breast cancer, but they don't tell anyone. So there's a huge uh, problem with women in farm communities having lots of breast cancer. So anyway, that's just a little idea that might give you a, a version of what I'll be talking about another time. I'm thinking next week, unless you're too bored with breast health, ladies, <laughs> or if you have any other ideas you'd like to send me. So unless there's anybody else, I think we'll go ahead and sign off. Anybody else want to say anything or share anything? This is Lynn. All right, Lynn. Uh, this is for my daughter. She, uh, we initially got her a wave watch because she had breast calcification and she was running it for that initially and had other issues. Well, her whole life, she's had problems with her teeth and her gums. And about six weeks ago, she went in for a cleaning and, and to have them checked. And she had so many gums receded to the four and five level. Well, they did a deep cleaning and some medicine. She went back yesterday. Well, meanwhile, she stopped running calcification because any minute she's not at work, she's running stuff for dental. She's running gingivitis, she's running peritonitis, whatever. When she went in, 
they said, this is almost miraculous. This was for a second deep cleaning. She did not have one, four or five gum in her mouth. They said, this is unheard of. This has never happened. And she said, this is my wave watch. I wear my wave watch every day. It has to be the wave watch. And she said, she's going to do a testimonial for you. But oh, okay. time she's at work today. So I just had to tell you because it happened yesterday and I didn't want to slip through and have us forget it. She oh my gosh. So tickled and just she gives testimonies to her doctors, to her, to her dentist, or whatever. And I, I just wanted you to know right away. Oh, thank you. And, and you know, I almost start to cry because I mean, I'm hoping uh, there are eight teeth connected with breast cancer. That's what we'll be talking about next week. I'll be naming the right. teeth that cause breast cancer. And so her work is just uh, amazing. You know, that could be, you know, as much as what's going on. So perfect. Oh, that's exciting, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful invention, Linda. We just, my daughter, my husband, and I use it every single day and write about it to everybody. And in fact, when one of my friends recently bought it, she's almost legally blind. And she drove across the state to us so that I could set it up for her. So because she can't see what she's doing with it. I set it up for every problem she has, but not real active ones, things she could do at night. And I set up a great big, great big playlist for her. And the way she uses it is she puts it on at night and lets it run all night long to address all of her issues. So Perfect. I was just so tickled. I've been telling her for months, it's like, you have to get this because you know it's gonna address so many issues in your body. So. We're just, you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Every day we bless you and thank you. Oh, my goodness, thank you. Um, I, I guess I want to throw in one more testimony too. And I know I've given it before, but I had an 82, 84 year old woman that uh, I think she lost her driver's license and um, she got the wave watch and her and her husband have five wave watches between them. <laughs> because they don't want to ever run out. <laughs> uh, so they charge one and wear the other one, you know, but five is what they have. And uh, she said that she was able to take off one of her hearing aids and she went back and retook her driver's test and she could see and she got her driver's license back. <laughs> That's so. fantastic. This may take a little more time because she yeah. has diabetes and went ended up going blind between a stroke and having her eyes bleed internally. So we're dealing yeah. with, you know, vision issues, diabetes issues, a lot of long-term wow. issues that may not resolve overnight, but I have no doubt that this is helping already. Perfect. Um, oh, thank, thank you, you again. Thank you. I, I Anybody just, else? Anybody yes. else? Um, you were talking about emotional ties to diseases. There's yes. Called the emotion code. Have you heard of this? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. because Go ahead. You can tell about it. Well, it, it's the idea is that there's energy trapped energies in your bodies from emotions. So the trapped emotions are removed. And when that happens, um, uh, sometimes you get a, a malady removed. So it could be anything from breast cancer to mm -hmm. something else. And it's I'm taking the course because it's so marvelous. Is that and, with Dr. Alex Lloyd or is that Bradley Nelson's? Bradley Nelson's. OK, I get him confused. But anyway, so. Yeah, it's perfect fantastic. and then it made me think of this um macular degeneration would be within uh the eye yes i believe i did not see one for that just says macular degeneration because i was just looking at that the other night um mm -hmm. so there were eye diseases and things like that and i have had a couple of testimonies on glaucoma on the eyes already but uh and uh there's another one on there Glau uh, glaucoma, I think. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, so, I have testimonies on that. That would still help to run it. Yes, you know, run all of those eye ideas. You know, maybe not, maybe not the cataracts, but the other ones would be probably because I was thinking the same thing for myself. So I, I muscle tested, and then I did uh, eye diseases. Is, is the one my body liked. Um, I wish I could buy a watch for everyone I know. <laughs> And I'm sorry, who is this? I, I wish I could buy, this is Go Love. I wish I could buy a watch, oh. everyone I know. It's, oh, th thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
All right, ladies, I really appreciate uh, your input. And, uh, you know, I, this is live on Facebook. So um, I guess I'm not punching big buttons to make your face, you know, huge, but you are uh, shown on the screen a little bit if you're sharing your, your video or your pictures. So image with me. So thank you very much. And we'll hopefully see you another time. Pass the word around. And if you have any anybody that wants to uh, look at it, it's live on Facebook. They can go and it will, it's recorded there. Thank you. Bye-bye, ladies. Bye-bye.